get kicked off with some painting tonight okay so uh, it looks like it looks like uh, YouTube is winning the live stream competition for timing okay so tonight's question is um, what do you paint when you don't know what to paint and I think it's probably one of the most common kind of problems artists and kind of people who write for a living or, or kind of creative brains have is that you kind of uh, you kind of hit that sort of blockage where kind of your brain doesn't want to compute and you kind of can't sort of get things going really I watched a brilliant little uh, skit that somebody did on YouTube um, a young lass called Mochino she's a lovely watercolor artist and and she did a whole little comedic sketch and it was just like five minutes of her trying to get inspired and she spent time singing to her hairbrush sleeping looking at a blank canvas putting one brush stroke on there deciding it was wrong screwing it up and throwing it away and then sleeping again and it, the whole thing was just like summed it up completely it is exactly what us artists will go through you're in sync oh good lovely Dave Dave Drain you say I'm in sync <laughs> my as long as when I'm speaking my lips are moving in time that's the main thing but but uh, I say I'm just I'm just skipping between different ones that's not a hi hi there from uh, s London on you're on the live stream with me on my YouTube channel so really welcome uh, really nice to see you. I'm just gonna skip backwards and forwards here um, so that's the, that's the subject tonight what what do you do when you can't kind of get inspired and um, let's say if you've never been in that place with your painting then we are not painting enough but you're very lucky but maybe one day you will be in that place and then you'll need to think about how you get out of it so I, I always go back to my basics when when I get kind of stuck or lost um, and I'm not quite sure what I'm doing I always think what what is my basics what 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 can I do to kind of get myself back in in the painting mode again and um, I've always found if I, if I do something simple, do something I can do with my eyes closed and something which I'm not going to get wrong because there is nothing worse, nothing more frustrating than, than not being in the groove, not feeling like it, not wanting to paint, not, not, and then trying and then failing miserably to produce a decent painting. Just something simple, you just can't, because that just kind of like snowballs and the problem becomes worse. So I, I always think to myself, let's go and paint something really simple, something which I know I can I can do without any kind of hassle. So that that's what I'm going to do tonight. Not that I got a, a mental block, but this is just one little exercise. It's a way of tricking yourself into getting back into into action again. So what I'm going to do is I'm I'm just going to I'm going to click backwards and forwards between Facebook and uh, YouTube here and also the program that controls all this and just pull this all about a little bit so there we go i'm gonna i'm gonna just disappear off the corner for a moment just for a moment okay right so there we go so now i've got everything set up and i've got my my whole screen dedicated to painting now. Get rid of my very high tech message. You can tell I'm old style. Okay. Right. So, what have I got? Well, I've got a. This is a. Well, this is, looks like a 14 by 18 canvas here, but I've actually taped it off. And I've actually made a little bit of a border to it here, and. Um, if you're looking really closely you can see there's a, a horizon line there and I got a little bit of a pattern down in here and I, and I split my canvas it's a classic one-third kind of two-thirds so it's about a third there and about two-thirds above okay and for those of you who have kind of uh, seen me paint before you know that I I use paper to paint on and this this is just um, it's called art house and it's just a wallpaper I'll get a little sample and just a, I got a little piece, whoops, I got a little piece sitting here. Let me just grab it. 
There you go. It's just a piece of uh, piece of wallpaper. Hopefully that camera's all still in line here. But that's what it is. Just it's just a wallpaper. It comes. You got it in kind of grey, and you got a, a beige one. This is just a, a grey one. Um, and what I like about it is part of the fact it's not too expensive, but it's actually got quite a nice little raised grain on that. If I get fit the camera in close, you can see it's kind of like textured. It's textured all the way through. Even the back is a little textured. So you can paint on both sides. And that's what I'm using, actually. Um, I used to use canvas paper, but that can be really expensive. And this stuff, I think, is about eight pounds for a 10 meter roll of it. So you can get yourself a lot of paintings. And it's about eight or nine pounds. And all I've done is I've given it a couple of coats of white acrylic paint, and that just to kind of seal everything up. Okay, so let me just flip backwards and forwards here. Okay. So you're, you're all good. Okay, right, lovely. Oops. Sorry folks, I'm just I'm just flipping backwards and forwards here. I wish I had a nice big computer screen so I could get everybody all on one screen, but it's kind of me just trying to flip between screens here to see what's going on. One day I will get, oh hi Paul. Um, one day I will get myself set up with two monitors and that'll double the trouble then to connect everything up. Okay, so, so what am I painting with tonight? Well, these. Um, I've been asked more and more and more by people, uh, emailed and messaged by folk wanting to know about different sorts of paint they can use to, to paint wet on wet, um, especially when supplies aren't always available. And they, you know, we've, we've gone through a bit of a dry spell where we couldn't get the right paints and a spell when the paints that were coming along were, well, maybe not the best. Um, the quality wasn't quite there. And, um, so I'm, I'm designing a little a range of paintings here. I'm actually going to be doing a, a series of paintings. I think I have about four or maybe five short tutorials. I'm going to do them on DVD, live stream. And it's, it's just a series of little make it and take it. But I'm actually using these. And these are, these are water mixable oils. Now, before anybody starts crossing themselves and giving me a hard time here, I'm really not being disrespectful. But if if you're kind of on a budget and a lot of people don't like using thinners and they don't like using really harsh solvents around the house maybe they've got children or kids or maybe they've got health issues and they just don't want to use uh, sort of strong solvents then these really kind of come into their own um, and they are just water mixable oils now a little a little kind of explanation on these things um, there's a difference between water mixable and water soluble. Water soluble, things that are soluble means that they will actually break up in, in, in a solution. In other words, you know, you can, you could put uh, oil paint into a, a, a sort of a thinner or an alcohol and it will completely dissolve. Okay. These are water mixable. In other words, they still remain oil paint, but they have been formulated. So they use an oil which will allow water molecules to kind of mingle. But as soon as the water evaporates, it becomes oil paint again. So uh, and some people kind of get a little confused and they think they're, these are more like a watercolor. And you can almost apply them like a watercolor. You can put them on a really thin wash. But after a few moments, they're oil paint again. And because these are still an oil paint, you can actually use these with a traditional oil paint. You can use them with Bob Ross oil paints. But as soon as you start using this with Bob Ross oil paints, then you start losing that water uh, mixable kind of um, special mix that they have. That, that, that property goes away. And then you're back to using solvents again. Now, they also make this, which is, uh, let me focus here, which is water mixable linseed oil. And they make water mixable stand oil. And they make a bunch of stuff now. So, if, if you're if you're especially on a budget um, this could be the way to go um, you don't have to get thinners you don't have to have anything just some water uh, and I realized my mistake I should have got a pot of water ready here with a few drops of washing up liquid in it um, so this little set here of six colors 
cost me 23 or 24 pounds um, I'll put some links on 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 my YouTube channel I'll, I'll throw some links down in the description down below to um, show you where I got this from well hang on sweetie could you get me a pot of water with a few drops of, of yeah just a little bit yeah a little bit of water here. so Terry Mar the Harsh she's just dropped she yeah. just called in at the studio and realised my dilemma as I forgot to get myself completely ready um, I think it's on the windows in the kitchen there we go she's on she's on a mission she's she's, she's going to fix my problems <laughs> she's going to fix me probably um anyway so this i think is about 23 24 pounds i'm not sure what that is in dollars and i picked this set because it only has to have six colors and from these six colors you can make a huge range of paint so what i've been playing around with in the interim oh that's it thank you here's my water pots just turned up oh yeah just 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 that's great thank you that's it dip super <laughs> dip my brush yeah thank you so Terry's just, Terry's just fetched in my, my pot of water. There we go. Yay. Just over there. No, I think I'm all good now, sweetie. I think I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. So this is what I've been spending a little bit of time doing just today. Just, just playing around with, with a few of these colours here. And I've got my cad yellow, uh, pale, yellow oak, alizarin crimson, French uh, ultramarine, which is a blue, had a green, alizarin crimson. And you can see I just mixed a, a kind of a, a variety of different different things here. So, um, you know, you get all these this nice variety of green colours here, um, and some nice terracottas as well. Um, but the one colour that's not in the box is black. And if you're ever struggling to make a black uh, colour, if you combine three primaries: yellow, red, and blue. And play around with the proportions you can get very close to black or as good as black as you need so if you're looking at this one here and wondering how was a bug um, if you're wondering how did you get black from green and crimson because that's how that color was was formed just think what actually constitutes green yep blue and yellow so you get blue and yellow to make a green so that's two of the primaries there and then you add crimson which is a red and you end up with this very very dark color here and and you can swing it around you can make it to the red side to the green side you can make a, a blue color which is very very close to like a midnight black or you can go slightly more lavender color which was for me more the traditional Bob Ross midnight black color which we haven't had for a while so and then these are three color mixes your ochre crimson uh, ultramarine blue to get a Van Dyke brown and cad yellow crimson and French ultramarine and again play around them with the proportions you see you end up with a, with a dark sienna type colour so from those six paints as in fact with those five paints those paints, that paints I actually got 16 colours that broadly match everything that we find in a Bob Ross kit so if you ever run out of a colour, um, just think about how you can mix up a colour. And I, this is probably, again, one of those little exercises which you probably wouldn't think you should do when you run out of inspiration. But trust me, make yourself a little colour chart. Just play around with some colour. You know, mix one to another, mix this to that, and, and see what you get. Because I guarantee you, people mix the most unbelievable colours. When you say, how did you mix that? They go, I don't know. A bit of this and a dab of that and something else and maybe this and maybe that and sometimes it comes out good but a lot of the time it comes out looking like you guessed mud so this little chart here may save you a lot of mud mixing so that's a little tip make a couple of color charts and there's any number of designs there are loads of designs let's have a look at my my little questions are there any questions? No questions for me. That's okay. Right. Okay. Before I say anything else, just in case some of my mates are looking in, just hi to uh, AD and Daisy and Kay. Um, 
and Danny? No, that's not their son's name. He'll kill me for that one. <laughs> Thomas. His name is Thomas. But if my mates are looking in, sending you all my love. That's, uh, and hope you're, hope you're viewing this and you're going to be marvelled and dazzled. Okay. That's Gavin. More painting. So here's my palette. Okay. I just put out a small amount. These are the water mixed oils. I got titanium white, the French ultramarine, and some alizarin crimson. French, I got phthalo green and alizarin crimson. Do you know what colour that makes? Starts with a B. Sounds like black. Black. Crimson, ochre, and the cad yellow pale. Okay, and as I say, I've got my paper paper canvas here. Brushes. Um, let's have a quick look. A big bunch of cheap brushes. Okay. Now, again, the little series of paintings I'm going to be doing, it's all about painting on a budget because sometimes money just isn't there and space isn't there. And, um, you know, and some of these brushes I was going to say are quite good. And one of these brushes is junk. Okay. This is my junk brush. Okay. This is the sort of brush. It's kind of the sort of thing you might buy from a hobby shop that is good for maybe whacking on a bit of poster paint or a bit of glue. But in all other respects, it's junk. Okay, so you can buy cheap brushes, but don't go too cheap because they'll just let you down. So I got some bristle brushes. Here's a three-quarter inch Bob Ross Wildlife here, and there's a synthetic brush of bristling. This is a new new brand of brushes that's coming out, and I'm giving those a bit of a road test, and they actually perform pretty nice. There's another. This is Dave Rowney System Three. This is more for acrylics, and they're a little on the soft side. Um, and I've tested out a few different fan brushes as well and I've got to say they kind of haven't quite got it right yet with the synthetic fan brushes I've tried two or three recently and they don't have the snap they don't have enough kind of body they're not quite they're not strong enough okay so so I would suggest if you're if you're looking at using only synthetic brushes avoid the fan brushes in particular because synthetic fan brushes just aren't there yet but lots of the other brushes are doing really well they've got some nice synthetic filberts as well but I don't think there that one aside which is a Bob Ross brand I don't think any of these brushes cost more than two or three pounds okay shop around online um, so you don't need to spend a huge amount of money especially if you're working small scale okay palette knife wise well there you go. Spot the difference. Okay, you know whose brand that is. It's my favourite brand. But there are a ton of generic knives now. I mean, just about everybody. And I'm not being disrespectful to the Bob Ross brand. Bob started the cult when he came up with that knife shape. But there are plenty of others out there who make something kind of in a different price range. Again, I think if you're looking at just getting started with Bob Ross, maybe a budget knife like that would just do maybe just to get you kind of going it's good enough to get you started but after a while you'll want something with a little bit more weight in it but this then will become just your kind of a chores knife something you mix up you know christmas pudding with i don't know custard but no, I'm, jo I'm joking but you, you know you could you could get away with that all right so first things first i'm going to get the lid off this linseed oil and Oh, I should have had my set that prepared, shouldn't I? The way I do is I'm just going to put my canvas up. A little coat of this linseed oil. I haven't told you what I'm painting yet, have I? Oh well. You just have to guess. So what I'm doing is I'm just laying down a very, very thin coat of linseed oil. And don't swamp your canvas, folks. Really, just don't do that. It's kind of you're going to get the, the world of hurt. Um, and if you're not sure how much is on there, how much you need to add to your canvas, then I've done a few videos, and they're on YouTube, from the Paul Ransom Art um, YouTube channel about how much liquid white, how much this, how much of that, how I test my canvases. I've done a whole bunch of live streams that kind of explain the ins and outs of things because I know people get into a pickle. 
I just remember being told off by one person that I talk too much. I hope they're not looking tonight. Okay. So that's it. Let me give that, tip that up a little bit. So you can see that I've got a kind of a, a slightly glossy coat on there. Not dripping wet. Not dripping wet, folks. But actually, I, I don't actually want a, a liquid transparent background. I'm actually going to be using some of this titanium white color as well. So this is kind of my, my take on liquid white. Again, you're not looking to make this really, really wet, folks. If this all gets kind of too slimy, especially if you're doing something like, like trees and bushes and things, that, that can get you into a real a real problem here. All I'm looking for here is just a thin, thin coat of white. And I will test my canvas in a second. Now the advantage of using this kind of grey, uh, light grey kind of background here is when, when you put on this titanium white paint, I don't know if you can see that a lot. You can kind of see where I've been and where I haven't been with my paint. It's kind of useful here. I'll put some down in here too. Now this little painting is one we used to do when we're doing lots of trade shows and craft shows. And this little painting was very popular. And it, and it was one really that I used to do as a little taster. They were called Make It and Take It. Anybody who's done a Bob Ross Teach training class or course for will we'll know what a Make It and Take It is. And like it says, it's it's they were basically done at cost price just to, just to let people experience painting oils. So they, they were absolutely fabulous and I always used to joke that I had more I had bigger calling cards than anybody else because there was one of these hanging on a wall and sooner or later someone would ask where did you get that lovely painting from and they tell them they did it at a craft show and uh, that was the best calling card the business card you could have because everybody would want to tell them where it came from and how they got it. Okay, so I put I put my titanium white over the top of my linseed oil. Excuse me a sec, I've just gone for a quick walk around the studio. I'm looking for I am looking for some baby wipes that I put down 30 seconds ago. I put some baby wipes right beside me and they grow legs and they walked away. Okay. No expense spent folks breaking out a new packet of baby wipes. Amazing isn't it? You put stuff out and it just disappears. Okay, we're in. Go have these baby wipes, okay? Because I'm going to test my cams, and this is something I do every single time. I'm going to take my hand, and I'm going to just touch a different finger and a different part of my canvas. Then I'm going to look at my hand. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see my fingerprints there? Get them in the light, okay? So my fingerprints. You can see my fingerprints really clear. You see all the little ridges, okay? I was a criminal. You could get that on Interpol, find out who I was. That's about right, okay? If when you touch the canvas, let's see if I can do it again for you. When I touch the canvas, you got something that looks more like that. Really weak and washy, wishy washy. That's not good enough. That's not going to work. And similarly, if you dip your finger on the canvas and you look at it like a block of ice cream, a little blob of ice cream, 
the nap there clearly is far, far, far too much. So that's the way you test your, your canvases. Test them and test them every single time. Don't sort of just plow into a painting and hope for the best because I absolutely guarantee the day you do that is the day, the day you actually do an absolute brilliant painting and you get kind of three quarters of the way down and uh, lo and behold the canvas dries out and your painting's in a pickle, it's in a mess. Okay, I'm hoping my live streams are still working. I appear to be a bit stuck. Okay, I think just my screen froze. Okay. I frightened myself there for a second. My screen froze about about 10 minutes ago and I thought I'd been talking to myself for 10 minutes. Nothing new there, folks. It's a little sip of tea. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with this brush. It's a nice little brush. Let me throw those other ones out of the way. Okay. But I don't really want to carry on adding my soupy white colour, my my thinned titanium wire. I don't want to keep adding that to my painting, so I'm going to just knock some of that off, just wipe a little off. So my very first color is going to be this one here. This is Cad Yellow Light. And this is quite a cool yellow. I don't mean like cool as in hip and trendy. I mean, it's not a, a warm, vibrant yellow in the same sort of sense that yellow ochre has got that real warm sort of like earthy color to it this is this is quite a cool yellow color okay and, and i'm going to use it really down here right along my horizon line and you can see when it kind of gets together with some of the titanium white color you can see that it doesn't have doesn't have that strength does it it's got a kind of a coolness to it And it is also a little on the transparent side, okay. Um, so when you put it on, you can see that it quickly wants to run and hide. It doesn't. It doesn't want to stick around for very long, and and it, it is easily dissolved in the titanium white and linseed oil mixture I put on there. So you find yourself adding more of it, okay. So. You've got to get kind of used to, to judging how much of a certain colour you're going to need. Um, cadmium yellows tend to be kind of a little on the weak side in terms of how well they cover in. And if you, if you think you get through a lot of type of cadmium yellow, this is the reason why, because it, it doesn't have that coverage. It's a transparent colour that's easily absorbed into other colours. Okay, so if you if you find yourself buying lots and lots of tubes of cad yellow, this is one of the reasons why. Okay, now I'm going to put some of that color down. I'm going to let's have some fun. This is crazy. Let's just pull some of this in here. Maybe I'm going to put a little more. Okay. So if you haven't figured it out yet, there's a kind of a reflection going on here. So there's my my cad yellow. So when you're applying this colour, make sure you put on plenty of it, okay? Don't don't just put on a little skinny strip of it and hope for the best. Put on more than you think you need because the next colour is going to be the ochre. And, and it is going to gobble this up. It is going to gobble this up. Okay. So let's get straight into it. I'm going to use the same brush. This colour is way stronger. Look at that. It just covers it's got fabulous coverage and it will take over from the cadmium yellow no problem at all let me just turn my autofocus off for a second there we go so that my my focus doesn't keep jumping in and out too much okay so yellow ochre one of my favorite colors it's wonderful oranges and let it get to be a bully. Okay, so this is just 
just a fun little painting you can do. Anybody out there who's got friends who say, wow, I wish I could paint like you. Maybe choose this little painting, teach it to somebody. You never know, you may be maybe a natural teacher. Yeah. Let's just put a few little, a few little streakies through here too. The idea of trying to make it and take it is that you actually kind of make it up as you go along, but you kind of design your painting as you go. That's going to be kind of a problem here, isn't it? If I'm not careful, that that's going to end up going all the way across there, folks. People often ask me, or people have asked me in the past, why bother with the liquid white? Why bother with all of that jazz? Why don't we just go on with the colour we're using? And this is one of the reasons why, because you can actually put your finger on it, and you can just push that colour right back where it came from. Now, if I was doing that on a bone dry canvas, I'd be in a world of hurt right now. I'd be spreading it everywhere. So you can see that you can use liquid white like an eraser, you can rub things out. Sorry about that, that was my telephone going off there. This one phone's a friend. Okay. Let me miss that little edge there. Okay. And if we have some up there, we should have some down in here as well. I'm not sure if anyone's painting along with me. I did kind of put the colours up. I think I kind of sent out a couple of messages to let people know what I was doing. So hopefully, there's one or two of you painting along. If there is, always email them to me. I'll have a look. Just a fun little painting to do. Just put that on there. Just shuffle one of those in there. There we go, look at that. Just zigzags. Don't let it get out of hand again. We don't have to rub it out, do we? Okay. So we've got a, this was a nice a nice little start to our painting here. Just give my hands a quick wipe. My Showing you how to fix things that are covered in paint. Okay. But the other reason I'm doing this little series of beginner's paintings is because it, apart from not having or wanting anything really toxic in your house, a lot of people actually have a lot of room. A lot of people working maybe from home these days and their spare bedroom has become an office or maybe they've only got a shed to work in. And they, they, they kind of ask me, you know, what, what can I do? What, you know, can I, can I sort of, you know, rig my, you know, kind of a, a corner of the, of a room somewhere that I could maybe paint in? And um, literally with this kind of a setup here, you could put this in one of those little kind of plastic toolboxes, and, and just the whole, the whole thing, or even in, even in a little drawer. There's some little things called pochard uh, boxes. They're like a little fold up like a little Swiss army knife for artists and basically it's a box with a little drawer on the front of it so like brushes a few paints and a, a little easel stand at the back and they're, they're, they're really kind of cheap price they're no expensive but they're fabulous and you could throw all of this into that little box and lo and behold you got yourself a, a little traveling paint kit okay so let's step up to the next color which is going to be Lizarin Crimson. You see I didn't bother kind of cleaning my brush because Lizarin Crimson Yellow Ochre it's kind of a nice peachy colour. Okay. Again it's kind of, kind of a strong peachy colour here so 
Again, don't overdo it too much, folks. Get away from you. And again, when this kind of hits with that that titanium white colour there, it gets some really nice colours. Just even trying to just a little hair of hair of yellow. And again, I really want to blend these two edges together. I really don't want to see where one stops and the next starts. So my phone's pinging away like a good one. Okay. The loser and crimson yellow open. Oops. It's in the wrong spot there, but that's okay. I don't really mind. I kind of don't worry about these kind of little, kind of little happy accents and things. They kind of put us somewhere nice in the end. <laughs> what I can hear is my mobile phone going ding, 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 ding. There's obviously a few friends have bumped into me on the internet. And, what are you doing? <laughs> okay. And again, I like to put in a few of these little It really couldn't be uh, any easier to paint. One brush and a handful of colours. So, and you can even rub through if you want to get some. You want to put a little kind of uh, cloud in. You want to give it a little silver line, just kind of rub your brush at it. And lift that little colour. All manner of things you can do. So, what's my final car gonna be? What do you think I could do? A little bit classic combo. Here we go, a little bit more. So, final colour. What should I do? Well, I've just used straight colour so far, so maybe, maybe I should have a go at mixing some colour. Okay, so I'm going to take my, my palette knife, which isn't quite. I take a little bit of alizarin crimson and a little bit of the French ultramarine blue colour. About one part blue. So two or three parts of the crimson colour. And kind of when you're mixing up colour here, don't forget you, you actually want to sort of really gather up your paint and flip it over and press it down, smear it down, and then gather all of it up again and flip it over again. Okay. So that way you get paint on one side of the knife but not on the back of the knife. And this way you get a complete mixture of colours here. You don't get kind of a bit of crimson left on the edge or a little bit of the, the blue unmixed. And, and what I'm looking for here when I mix this, I'm looking to see a nice lavender colour. Maybe a little hair more. Yeah, there we go. You see, every time I pick that up, I get to see my palette. And I get to see what colour I'm mixing. I know that I'm going to get to the point where suddenly this colour changes. See, that it's crimson has become sort of this plum colour. And then a little more blue. I'm suddenly going to get a nice mode of colour. It's almost there. It's like kind of an explosion, a kind of Is my purpley colour I'm looking for. Now, if I carry on adding a little bits of blue to this, and I could add a little bit more blue, what eventually happens is that it suddenly just becomes bright blue, 
and the, the French aquamarine colour just kind of rushes in there. And this is the same whether you're using phthalo blue or Prussian blue. Um, blue is kind of a bully and it kind of sneaks in there and wants to take over the world. Okay, so these are two primary colours mixed together, they make you a nice lavender. And if you if you ever wanted to know how a colour, there it is. There's the, the little the little swatch I mixed up, crimson and blue. A nice lavender colour here, so you could have always checked on your colour chart first. Okay. I'm going to carry on using this brush. We've got a little kind of grubby now, so I'm going to give it a little bit of a dry clean. Okay. Just check all my my viewers are still there. You all still there? You can say hi. Please say hi. You say hi, then I know you're all still there. Okay. I'll just try cleaning my brush. I think it's fair to say that anybody who's been watching my live streams over the past few months know that me and me and live streaming, <laughs> I haven't had the best of luck trying to get my system to set up and work properly. I've had more than a few hiccups, but. I managed to get the settings right for tonight. Okay, I'm going to give my lavender colour here. I'm going to start right up in the top left corner with this colour because if it's the wrong colour, if it's if it's just too strong. Hi Paul, hi Kay, still watching Dave, lovely, good. If, if this colour is too strong, you know, if it's not a nice colour, I'd rather it be not a nice colour up here there's not a nice colour right in the centre where I'm going to look at it. You see what I'm saying? Because if it's not quite the right colour, then I would rather kind of figure it out before I get too close into the middle of my painting. I'm just I'm just adjusting my colour, putting a little more crimson in. I really don't want this to be too strong. It's kind of, kind of strong there. So, you see, before I kind of get too involved in mixing this in with all my other colours, I'll knock a little off. And if I really wanted to, I could even wash my brush. But, there we go. Okay, I'm just going to pull these colours into each other. Too strong, just take your brush, just thin it down a little bit, pull that through there. So you see how that liquid white, or rather my my version of liquid white, let's not call it anything special. Let's call it my my take on liquid white. It works really quite nicely there. I managed to get a nice colour through the sky. But what happens if I kind of sneak through this crimson and I start playing with these yellow colours here? Am I going to be in trouble? What do you think? Well, there's a good chance. There is a good chance I'm going to get some green coming through here. So it really depends on how much blue you get mixed into this. If you're kind of careful and you don't overdo it with the blue. And you don't mess with it too much because the blue is still active. Although I made it into a lavender colour, the blue colour is still active and it's still likely to come and get you if you're not careful. So you can you can get yourself into a into a pickle if you're not careful here. That looks how kind of nice, doesn't it? A little bit of this. Oh, somebody down in here. So I'm kind of mirroring what I've got going on up above here a little bit. Isn't that a pretty little painting so far? Just a handful of colours. A 
down, so you're going to tone this down a little bit. You'll see why in just a second. She's going to put a little colour through there. It'll make sense in a minute, folks. I often explain to people that when I'm painting, especially when I'm doing demonstrations, it's it's really like a game of chess. I'm, I'm kind of thinking two or three steps ahead because the last thing I really want to do is paint myself into a, into a position where I make a mess of this painting and whilst I don't mind being laughed at, I'd rather not make a fool of myself if I don't have to. But there we go. So there's my kind of basic background to my painting. I need to really do something in this sky. I, need, I haven't really got a focal point in my painting. Somewhere, somewhere your eye just falls to. And, and that's what I'm going to put in next. I, re, I really want your eyes to look at a set place on my painting here. And this is where I'm going to bring in a, a really special piece of equipment. Some of you will know that I pretty much always use my fingers at some point. What I'm doing here is I'm just using a little touch. A little ochre. A little bit of it's tangy white paint. Um, I'm making myself a, a sort of creamy white colour. Mainly white, a little bit of ochre in it. Just a, just a tiny bit. Put my head a little bit right in the middle of my finger. It's not my little finger like it's for. And I'm going to pick a spot. I, I kind of like this little area here. This kind of, this is a bit pale down here. So I'm going to, do, do I put it dead centre? What's the vote? Centre or a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right? Or a little bit to the right. I think I heard what you said. I'm just going to put my finger in there and do a little... Get a little circle there. Now, what I'd say is, is if this goes completely wrong, pick up your brush, blend it out, and you can have another go. Is that bright enough, maybe? Top tip here, start with a little smaller than you think you need it, okay? If you start and, and it gets kind of too massive, you've got a big job to clean it up, but start out a little smaller. Believe me, it will grow on you. And next thing you know, it's going to be bigger than you wanted it. There we are. So a little bit of a focal point in my sky, a little bit of a sunshine. Here. Do you do I dare brush across that? Do you think and remove all that surface paint? Because it's, it's a little bit raised actually. There's a little bit of a bump of paint on there. It's like it's kind of sitting up, a bit like a worn-up whip. Gone. See that? Just hit it once with a knife. A little quick flick and just literally touch and just skid across the canvas and just pick it up and take it off in one. You'll be fiddling around with your fingers and brushes and all that stuff just to just hit it with a knife and off it comes. And it, it kind of doesn't affect the shape of things. So if you haven't figured it out, this is a seascape that I'm doing, and it's kind of a nice, sort of simple seascape here to do because. Hi, Peter Simmons. Hello there. Good to hear from you. Um, so one of my mates has just chimed in on my YouTube channel. Um, so it's nice to see you. That's my fame is spreading. Something's spreading. My width is spreading, probably. Okay, so there's my little background sky. And this little colour here that I mixed up there for, the, for that sun, that's nicknamed... The nickname for this is called Seascape White, and um, white with a speck of yellow ochre into it. It's, it's actually almost brighter than titanium white on its own. I'll bring it up a little closer. It's, it's almost brighter than, than straight titanium white because it's got that kind of zing about it. I may have put a little bit more, too much ochre in there, we'll see. So I'm going to use this palette knife, and I'm going to literally just touch into my paint. 
dab okay, and get a little roll of paint. I hope people sort of kind of had trouble loading the knives with the paint for water lines, but just tap, just pat it into the paint and you'll pick up a little bead of paint and kind of figure out where, where, where you want the kind of the light to be going across the water here. Just touch, touch on that horizon line. Now you can see why I wanted to put a little bit of grubby colour there. I want seascape to show up. I think I put too much ochre in that one second and get my white paint back. Now, here's a little tip for you. The temptation now would be to pick my knife up and mix it all together again and lighten this just a fraction and then probably not enough and I'd have to add more white and mix and eventually once I've used up the entire tube I have the colour I want so here's a little tip for you smear down the pure white colour and then put a little bit of this yellow ochre colour into it so instead of trying to make a whole big new colour one big ball of it make a little sample colour next to it it's a little trick I learned years ago. It just pops. Pops a little more. So what I'm looking for here is a little bit of a suggestion of some background waves. A little bit of calm surf maybe. I think I could have got my yellow colour there a little stronger. Yeah, I guess I could have done. But that's because cad yellow is a cool colour. It doesn't have a lot of strength. Let me just extend it out along the horizon line a little bit more. A nice simple little painting. If you lost your painting mojo and you were lacking a little inspiration maybe maybe this is the sort of painting you should be doing every once in a while something nice and fun easy to do now i could do all kinds of things down here waves and beaches and things but for me, I think I'm going to have some nice little sand dunes in there. Um, and I really want to cut up a really a nice black colour for that. So what do we say we mix up black? How do we mix up black? Can you remember? There we go. It's crimson and green. Okay. The green's got the two primaries in it already. And adding a little bit of crimson gives me the third primary. I'm just going to mix this up see what I can get. I'm looking for a kind of an inky black colour. Yeah, I'm getting pretty close. Then I'm going to paint some sand dunes. There we go, look at that. Put that up. Put that over a couple of times here. That's some nice inky black colour. Let's test it. Here's what brush I'm going to use. A nice old sand dune there. What I'm doing here is I'm kind of going to create this sort of almost like a, it's like a little V at the front here. Nice to use. It's kind of guiding your eye to the back of the painting here. So there you go, a little sand dune there. Maybe. Maybe vary the heights a little bit, maybe. Maybe. Maybe have that one across in the front. So I, I just pull a little bit more light on that one. And now I've got my sand dunes crossing over. And I'm going to push that one back. 
put this one forward. And just with two similar colours, you can get something fun happening. Now this isn't quite a neutral black colour here, it's kind of got a little hint of green in it still, but that's okay. Uh, because this paint is sort of movable, you can kind of move it around a little bit. If I want to make myself another little sand dune there, I can just kind of shift the paint around a little bit. There we go. And you can put little thing, footprints in it with like cotton buds and stuff. I did it with a very sweet young lady. Ooh, we're probably talking 15, 16 years ago. She's probably got children of her own now, it was that long ago. But I said, who would be on the beach with you in the evening sun? She said, I'd have my dog there. And she got the end of a cotton bud and she made some little dots. And she said, there's my dog's footprints. Is that sweet? <laughs> she had a wait of a time. I wonder if she's still got that painting. I wonder if it's hanging on her living room wall. I just got to quickly check my messages thank you West London yeah it's a very simple little painting it was one of the comments that's coming up on YouTube there for you people in the, um, Facebook land is that is that sometimes the simplest of paintings can, can bring you so much pleasure and you don't have to paint a masterpiece every time or paint huge sort of scenes every time you can just paint something fun it doesn't have to be, you know, knock your socks off, three month sort of epic. It can be just something like this, done in an hour, just for fun. Now, I've got a little, a little detail brush here, a little liner brush. I'm going to just dip it in some of that linseed oil and, and thin my paint down. Here's where you can see that colour. It's kind of a greeny hue to it. I'm sure if I pull some more crimson into this and maybe a little more yellow I can pretty much guarantee I get as close to a neutral black as I could now again there's a little tip I give people when they say you know you're using a liner brush it's a small brush but you want to use all of it get your hand right down the end of the handle okay and you want to paint with the tip of the brush you don't want to use the side of the brush particularly you want to use the point of the brush and just touch. We folk have real problem doing thin branches and thin grasses. And I say always oh, the same thing. The chances are you're holding it down here and then you have to move your whole arm. You know, everything's got to move. Whereas this way, you just have to sit there and keep your hands still and just wiggle your fingers around. And you can make really lovely grasses I'm not sure what they're called I think they're called eel grass I could be wrong I think that's the name of these little grasses and notice also I'm, I'm deliberately painting through my horizon line again that's a little kind of challenging sometimes we, we tend to sort of end up painting like this this is kind of is kind of what I wouldn't suggest doing. It's where we paint. It's where we paint everything the same height, nice and evenly spaced, and it all stops before it hits that horizon line. They're like a little bunch of soldiers sitting there, and and this is kind of something I again I I kind of try and advise people to really avoid doing. Is horizon lines are there to be painted through? You kind of you want to push that back paint right through it. Pretend it's not there. I just had a quick look at the clock. I'm coming up on my on my nine o'clock deadline here. Well it's not a deadline. It's just I just figure that you'll watch for as long as your patience will let you. And after an hour of me, my patience is probably gone. So I'm gonna wrap this up and let you get back to watching the football 
Hmm? See how much I'm struggling here to get rid of those little soldiers. Yeah, you kind of make your life difficult for yourself here. Okay. I think you got a pretty good idea. And the sort of thing I would paint when I don't know what to paint. I paint something simple. I paint something fun. Something which I've painted maybe a few times before. Something which I know that isn't going to stress me out too much. Something that's going to be, yeah, it's really the sort of painting, whether you've painted a hundred times or this is your, just going to be your very, very first painting, that you could tackle this and you could sort of hang it on the wall and say, I painted that. And, and everyone would look at it and say, that, that's amazing. I didn't know you could paint. And just keep quiet. Don't tell them that you didn't know either because just kind of bask in the glory of doing a really good job. Okay, put a few little little seed heads on this. There's a few little bits and dots. Okay. So I, I, I use my little finger and I hook it around the edge of the canvas here. So that from I, I had, sometimes I, I perch it on the edge of the canvas. I use it like a little tripod, and that way I can reach across. So the are actually using a little canvas. Okay, and a signature. My little bird on top. Okay, so that's it, folks. What do you paint when you don't know what to paint? Now you got the answer. Let me go back onto. Okay, so there you go, folks. Just a, just a fun little painting there for you that I did in an hour. Um, you can see it's turning dusk outside here on sunny Worthing on the, on the south coast. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching me fooling around on the canvas for an hour. Um, but if you're, if you're ever really struggling to kind of find your way with painting, if you're really struggling to kind of get going, this, something like this could really help you just kind of break that. Um, thank you. I don't know what S stands for, but thank you S London, very kind um, on my YouTube channel. But something like this could really kind of help you kind of get going again. If you kind of lost momentum or you lost a little bit of uh, confidence in what you're painting, um, you're very welcome Kay. Um, oh, Dave just asked a question now. Can you use Bob Ross brushes with the water-based oils? Um, yes, you can use them. Um, but I would never wash my Bob Ross brushes in water, okay? Bob Ross uh, landscape brushes, one inch brushes, absolute no-no to put them in water. They, they, the natural bristles, they swell. And before you know where, you've got a brush that looks like the end of a flue brush, you know, something that you clean a chimney with. Um, I've rescued a few brushes over the years that people have brought to me and said, what did I do wrong? And I can almost, always guarantee you the one thing they did is that they washed it in soap and water and I know I hear I see a lot of people saying oh it never hurt my brushes my brush is this my brush is that if you got Jenny and Bob Ross brushes and not a decorator's brush which one guy told me he was did his, he did all these Bob Ross brushes in soapy water and I said let me see a photograph and he sent me a photograph of a Harris decorator's brush and I said yep great lovely it's a household decorator's brush it's not a Bob Ross brush you can wash them in anything you like and it won't touch them because they're just cheap. Okay, so I digress. Dave, don't use water on your Bob Ross brushes. If you're going to use water mixable oils with Bob Ross brushes, you're stuck with using thinners. Um, it's the reason why I don't use my Bob Ross brushes with water mixable oils because I'm going to want to drop these in to a pot of water. And voila. Um, so Yep, I, I'm just going to dump my brush just to prove that they are water mixable oils. There you go. So this is just just water and a couple of three drops of washed nut liquid. Um, and this is a really old, 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 old bristle brush, so I don't really can't really do, do any real damage to this. But if anybody thinks that water mixable oils 
can't be uh, washed in water. There you go, there's the proof of the pudding. Um, this is a synthetic liner brush. And this again, I'm just doing this in water. There you go. But again, I, I wouldn't do my Bob Ross brushes in water, you'll wreck them. Okay, so I think. I think that's it for tonight. I'm getting a little horse. No, not a Shetland pony. I heard you out there all laughing. <coughs> I'm getting a little... <laughs> What's that old joke that I once heard? I think it was... Um... Oh, I can't remember. He used to speak like that. He went to the doctors and the doctor says, let's have a look at your throat. And he opened his mouth and he said, a little raw. He went, ah. <laughs> I can't remember the guy's name now it'll come to me as soon as I switch the camera off but he was a great comedian but yeah I'm getting a little horse and a little raw um, so I'm gonna just round it off now so just like to thank you all for your time tonight it's been been great uh, doing some live stream again um, I've missed it for the last few weeks a lot of a lot of stuff to deal with around the house here so kind of time gets away from me a little bit but but I'm gonna just say Happy painting, everybody. Um, go and check out some of the stuff on, on YouTube. Uh, there's some, some lots of little how-tos and demos and things. People struggling to do things like seascapes, how much liquid white, or painting better trees and bushes. There's a whole bunch of do's and don'ts on there. So I'm just gonna keep putting, the, putting it out there to help you guys do better paintings. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just gonna say good night, God bless. Mwah. Big kisses to all the girls, handshakes for all the guys. And we'll see you soon. Good night.